So usually how I like to, to start these conversations is really about, you know, a company's journey, a brand's journey, an individual's journey on, on how things get started. You know, I think it's a, it's a big deal when, when somebody decides mm-hmm. to de- dedicate their, a lot of their life, right? Years of their life and time and money into, into a brand and company that they truly believe in and passionate about. So just tell us a little bit about how Pan-Africa started. So yeah, Pan Pan Africa started like five years ago in 2015. So I'm one of the founder and uh, I just started the the brand and the company with uh, one of my friends. We were in college together. And uh, when we finished our studies, we both had a job. Uh, He was working in real estate in in Paris. And uh, I I did my uh, like last internship for my school uh, in uh, in Senegal okay. in Western Africa. Uh, I was really, really willing to discover this part of the world so I just found an internship there uh, and I finally spent three years in Western Africa, one year in Senegal, one year in Ivory Coast and one year in Congo uh, and I was working f- in finance so this is quite a different world of <laughs> right. a different world knowing that Pan-Africa is in fashion. So we both worked for three or four years we learned a lot, but we finally reached a point where we were not really comfortable in our like common jobs. We had been having a lot of ideas when we were uh, in the university together. Uh, we almost bought a plumbery. I don't know how to say this in English. Um, you know, the people fixing the water. Uh, oh, like plumber. Yeah, plumbing company. Yeah, plumbing. Uh, we almost bought a plumbing company a few mm-hmm. years uh, before. <laughs> just meaning that we were really willing to to have our own business and i was living in africa as i told you and we started having like ideas uh using the fabrics uh that we can see in this in this part of the world so we started talking a lot about this he was still in france i was uh living in africa and uh one day we we just said to each other okay let's let's do it uh, <laughs> We are still young, we have not much to lose, uh, and we want uh, to change our professional wi- life. Uh, we had good jobs, but like lack, we, we had a lack of meaning in the jobs we had. And we were looking for something more aligned to our values. So the idea came from the, from the African prince, saying, okay, we, these prints are fantastic. We yeah. do something really cool with those prints. And we came to the idea of making shoes with it. I guess, you know, going from deciding to buy a plumbing company, right, to, to decide to start like a sneaker company, those are, those are two very, very uh, different things, right? So what, I guess, what drew you to sneakers, right, and, and sort of the industry of, of fashion and as far as taking, taking the prints and looking at the designs, I mean, they are beautiful, right? There's just kind of not mm-hmm. this, it's a little bit similar to like some South, South American prints, how it's just like these bright colors and sort of, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it's just, uh, but like the way, I don't, I haven't seen anybody do it in the way you guys have done it in, in sort of the, the, the sneaker industry. So sure. I guess, I guess the, the easiest question would be was, was why, why sneakers, right? And, and what, what kind of drew you toward that industry? So there are many different reasons. The first one is that we were really willing to work uh, and to make a product. Because, you know, I was working in finance, so I was buying and selling money. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was working in real estate, so he was buying fields to to build uh, buildings. So this was a bit more concrete than my job. But we really wanted to have like a product we can have in hands and be proud of. Right. Uh, and the idea was to like mix some traditional uh, craftsmanship in a modern and uh, like more streetwear, urban uh, style. Yep. And sneakers seems seem to be the 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 the, the, the most efficient product to do that, to do so but to be really honest it came to sneakers a bit by a bit randomly we were thinking about ideas and when this idea came came up we thought okay it's a good idea let's go <laughs> we've not been thinking that much uh, we've not been doing market studies we didn't we didn't make a market study and notice that there were no offer on this kind of products it was more like listening ourselves listening what we want to do Right. It, it brought us to, to sneakers. Yeah, sometimes I think it's it's a better way to do things because if you're if you're making something just at the market once, it might not be something that you want to make, right? And it's not going to have that passion in it. It might not be the mm-hmm. best pr- best product it could possibly be. But if you're just doing it because you want to do it, <laughs> you're probably going to do it really, really, really well, you know. And, and the work comes out in that. Like 
you can see that it's like we pick something that we wanted to do not what the market told us to do but just like what we wanted to do personally and the product becomes fantastic right it just there's there's a lot more you can tell that it's sort of made with passion right and in the direction mm-hmm. of, of something that you're taking time to like think about right and like we want to make this shoe yeah, exactly beautiful. And then we thought a little about it because we were like quitting our jobs, etc. So we had yeah, to yeah. About it. <laughs> and we thought that it was the, the great accessory to, to mix like traditional prints, uh, but make it like modern and uh, more uh, like 20th century uh, style. So uh, we thought it was a, an article, an accessory people can have more fun with. Yeah, uh, knowing like, if you if you make shirts with like full African prints, it's gonna be maybe a bit difficult to to bring this to European market or right, right. Uh, in the US. When you talk about sneakers, it's like an accessory. You can you can really twist your style with it, and you can go a little beyond uh, than with a shirt or uh, trousers or or something else. Talk a little bit about actually getting the shoes made, right? And, and you know, connecting with the people who actually make them, right? I mean, obviously you were living in the continent, so you probably had some connections, but when you guys made the decision, did you have somebody already in mind to actually, mm-hmm. you know, go to make the sneakers or do you had to, you kind of had to start from scratch and kind of knock on doors and, and look for, look for manufacturers? Maybe I can tell you the, the story about how we started uh, regarding the the factories and stuff. But one important point is that, as I told you, so we wanted to change our life. We wanted to start our own business, but we also wanted to have something much more uh, consistent with our values. So the, the, idea was, the idea was not only to to make a product, but the idea was to build a, a full project we could just be proud of. So the idea was not just to make a shoe and put it on the market and sell it. We really had the, a strong wish, which was to be proud of our way of working. So. Uh, we didn't know much about the fashion industry, about the, all this world, but we discovered things that we didn't really like, let's say. Yeah, yeah. And it could be a dirty business. The, 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 yeah, and the first idea was to say, okay, how can we, how can we make cool shoes and how can we make it uh, having a positive impact doing it? And knowing that we were uh, starting from African prints uh, that came, that were, were mostly from Ivory Coast, we thought, okay, we should make the full shoe uh, in Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should promote like local uh, industries, local business, local factories. And uh, yeah, we were willing to find uh, partnerships uh, that were consistent with our values. So we didn't know much about shoe production. So we started to just look on the internet where we can make shoes in, in Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are not much options, to be, to be honest. Yeah. Because uh, it's quite a specific, it's quite a specific industry. We came to Morocco quite quite fast. Uh, I had been doing also an internship in Morocco uh, a bit earlier, so it was an environment that I knew a little. So we just said ourselves, okay, let's go to Morocco and we will find a factory. <laughs> so we we packed our bags, uh, we took our plane, and we arrived in Casablanca. Uh, we found a list of uh, factories making shoes, and we just arrived at the door. Uh, with the drawings of what we had in mind and uh, asked the guy, okay, we want to make this. <laughs> and a lot of them, a lot of them, they just lost at us because, okay, they just, they, they just told us, okay, do you think we make shoes out of a drawing? Uh, do you have the shapes? Do you have the lat? <laughs> right, right. The, all the, mat- the material, do you have the sole? And we just told them, no, we have nothing. And we thought you could provide us with uh, all these elements. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was really the two of us with uh, our bags on, on, on the back. And we visited like 30 factories, I think. Wow. 15 of them were really not the kind of factory we were looking for. Sure. Uh, it was huge factories with like the working conditions didn't seem to be so good. Yeah, it was not the kind of environment we were looking for. So out of the 30 factories, 15 were like out of the game. Then just told us, okay, guys, you're not ready for your project. Right, so right. Maybe come back to us in one year. And uh, five of them were okay to start talking. We started talking with one guy in particular. He had a small factory. Uh, it was like family business. Uh, we had a really good feeling with the guy. He was willing to invest some time and money to, to help us start. And that's how he started. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's a very tough decision, but I think it was, 
it's interesting that you you went to so many right but initially you could knock so many off the list because maybe they didn't they didn't fit your your standards and and you kind of looked at it as as not a right fit and i think that's that's important right that you didn't just kind of go with whoever would accept you um that's you kinda... that's a really important part you know in our way of doing we only work with suppliers that we've been that we've visited because you know we have an ethic behind the brand in our mind let's say one important point is uh, know the people you're working with yeah. go there see how they work see uh, how the how the people are treated there uh, and you you settle partnership but it's human partnership and human relations that's what we like and that's really yeah anytime we work with a new supplier uh, whether it is in Ghana, in Ivory Coast, uh, in Burkina, uh, even in Morocco, uh, we we visit them uh, because we want to know uh, we want to know who we work with, how how things are done there, who are the people behind the the shoes, the fabrics, the, the con- any component of the shoe. Amazing. When you when you first started, you, you said you, you you didn't come from the fashion world, right? So you didn't really know you know how it worked and maybe what were some of the not not so good things and you, you just didn't know the world. So when you started to do like your research, was there anything that, that jumped out to you that was like, that was shocking to you as far as, you know, maybe exploitation, exploitation of labor or how things are made and, and sort of the, the detriment to the environment that really like so big for, fast for fashion sure, has. For sure. We, we, we knew already a few things uh, about that because, you know, this is getting quite a common topic now. Right. Um, you cannot ignore uh, the the all these problems that you can face in fashion. But you know, reading an article about it and seeing the how it's going in a factory, it's something really, really different. I mean, to mm. me, mm-hmm. uh, one of the factory we've been visiting was a huge, huge, huge factory uh, in Morocco, and the boss of the factory was in his office, and he had like cameras behind each people, and he has a micro a few microphones in his in his office and he was just pushing in his button and saying okay you work faster okay you and we say that's how, that's how it is and hopefully you know it's in morocco so it's not facing like the the worst uh working conditions that you can have in china with the you know the Uyghurs, for example at the moment which is getting a very big uh, a very big subject so we didn't see like uh, labor uh, ch- child labor or stuff but with those things were really not comfortable with it. Right. So we we knew uh, about all the the problem you can face in fashion in terms of working conditions, in terms of envir- environmental issues. But it's not the same thing like reading it in an article and seeing the right. way coming out of the factory and just being uh, put somewhere in the nature. Uh, when you see it, you can. It's impossible to 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 ignore it. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great point. I think it's it's one thing in in any sector, right? It doesn't have to be just fashion, but reading about something and seeing it in person, you know, with your own eyes is uh, is quite a different story. When you guys decided on on doing on, on you know a manufacturer and, and sort of started to get the ball rolling a little bit, did you have just you know one sneaker design you know at the at the gate that you were going to do? Um, was it a variety of different things? And how was that process? Did it, was it as smooth as you hoped or was there a, a bunch of different hurdles that you had to overcome to even get, you know, the first shoe uh, mm. to sell, right? To, to have a customer actually buy it. Yeah, as I told you, we had drawings and we thought that out of, the, uh, out of, out of a drawing, we could have a sneakers uh, like two days later. <laughs> uh, that was a big mistake. <laughs> That was a big mistake. So we, we are not designers ourselves, uh, my partner and I. So we had uh, been working with a, a designer for the, the, the first uh, design. It was just one design and we were mixing different, uh, different prints, different colors, different materials, but only in one design. And I think that was a good thing to start only with one design because it was tough enough to have like one pair of shoes done uh, well. So we went to, to the factory with this design and say that the guy okay can you produce this and then we realized like that shoe is quite a technical product uh you have uh, to get a sole you have to get a last which is like like a piece of wood on which you build the the shoe right uh, you have to make all the um, cutting material to cut the 
to cut the cutting knives to cut the materials. We didn't have this. We had, we had nothing of this. And Morocco is a pay, is a country where they, they know how to make shoes, but you don't have the full ecosystem. Let's say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to China, the factory has the has everything inside it, or just the the next door. So we had to start really from scratch. And the problem was we had no we had not much time until uh, we start selling because you know we just started the company with our own money. Right. Uh, we had been working for like three or four years. So we had a little savings that we, that we just put into the company. It was not much. So we had a constraint that was to start selling quite fast. Yeah. So we had to move fast. And we were not like knowing all the, the things we should have known to, to move fast. So it has been quite challenging. Uh, it has been quite challenging. And I've been spending maybe eight months out of 12 the first year in the factory Wow! To move forward. That's how I learned how to make a shoe. Uh, that's how I learned all the technical features, and that was a really good learning for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. Because now, when I talk to a factory or a supplier, I understand what is what what he's telling me, and that wasn't the case like five years ago. How has COVID hit the manufacturer or that part of Africa? Has there been quite a bit of slowdown? Has there been a halt in the business because you can't produce anything? Mm-hmm. Um, or do have you seen people maybe, you know, find, you know, Pan-Africa easy now that people are home and maybe searching for, for different things that they haven't searched before? Um, how has the experience of the last year been? Um, regarding um, Sub-Saharan Africa, the impact of COVID has been quite limited. Few things were a bit slower than usually, but we still managed to go forward and to to have things done. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Morocco, the situation was a bit more complicated. Uh, they went uh, into lockdown and really quickly, and it was a really, really, really strict uh, lockdown. So one of so now we're working with two factories in Morocco. Mm-hmm. One of the two managed to keep on working during the full period, but the 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 production was the much how do you say in english less fast how do you say yeah it? yeah yeah slower <laughs> yeah much slower sorry <laughs> the production was much slower because um, they had many people many employees that didn't manage to come to the to the factory oh right the yeah, transports yeah. Were very complicated um the government settled like the government could pay you even though you don't go working uh, they pay you like 70 percent of your salary if you, mm. even though you don't go working so some of right. the work just prefer to stay at home rather than going at the factory. And some of the workers were also afraid to go in the factory. Sure. In a shoe factory, uh, many, many people touching the same piece uh, of fabric, the same sole, etc. So there was quite a high risk of transmi- transmission of the virus. Mm-hmm. And all the factories did their best to take all the measures they can to, to limit it, to have people wearing masks, to have uh, the hand shampoo to... to to avoid the contamination. So in yeah, in this factory, production was much slower, but was still working. The other factory, I guess they called me uh, on Monday, maybe at noon, mm-hmm. to tell me, okay, we're closing the factory in 30 minutes. Oh and wow! <laughs> I was supposed I was supposed to to deliver a big amount of pairs to our main client of the year, like one week be- one week later. And yeah, the factory decided to close and I could not change their, their decision because they were making it <laughs> for the health of their employees. And I was not, I mean, it was, their deci- it was their decision. So from there, we started big discussions with our clients uh, to figure out how we can arrange things because it was quite exceptional situation. So all the people were quite uh, under understanding, uh, quite compliant. Sure. sure. Uh, now I... we, still have, we still have delay on on uh, the production for example now we are 16th of september we were supposed to launch our fall winter collection at the beginning of september and we still are missing half of it sure uh, because of this delay but uh, so it's it's quite uh, it's quite having a strong a strong impact on our turnover on our organization and stuff but you know you have to you have to be flexible and the luck we have is that we are a small company so we can move quite fast yeah. we can adapt each we can adapt ourselves and uh, i think it can be m- much difficult for a big group of like five five thousand 
people. Yeah. Huge process and and stuff. Uh, regarding the, the 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 clients, we've been quite lucky because we just launched a new model uh, in March, uh, beginning of March. New style of shoes, more sneaker style, more sportswear, let's say. Okay. With all the product behind, so it's a it's a shoe made out of seventy percent of recycled materials, and the the shoe is fully recyc- recyclable itself. Wow. Uh, and is that the is that the Sahara, the Oasis? The Arusha. Okay. Yeah, the Arusha. Arusha. I don't yeah. know if you have it in mind. Yeah, that's great. It's, it, they're amazing. I love them. It was a new model, and it was also a new project and new concept behind the the, the shoe. There is also a 10 euro deposit on this shoe. If you send us the shoe back, we give you the, the deposit back because uh, we then recycle the shoe and re- re- reuse it to produce new, new materials. Interesting. And we just launched this product in March and it was on pre-sale. So knowing that you were buying the shoe at a, at a reduced price in March or ap- in a- April and you get delivered like three months later. So, you know, many people stop their online buyings because they were afraid of, okay, will shipping occur? Mm-hmm. Will I receive it? Is there a risk of transmission of the virus by the, by the delivery guy, etc.? And this selling campaign was on pre-sale. So just like get rid of all these uh, problems that the, client, that the clients could be afraid of. Yeah. And uh, it was a huge success. We, we, we sold one, one, 1,500 pairs in, in a month. Wow. Uh, of this product. So it was, it was unexpected. So in terms of sale, this period has been, has been okay for us. Uh, yeah. It's been okay for us. Yeah. How, talk about the process of, or, or just the, the going into doing, you know, recycled materials and, and kind of, cause I, I really am fascinated about sort of how, especially I think the, the fashion industry just has a great opportunity to kind of, you know, make itself, you know, much more sustainable and ethical from an mm-hmm. environmental standpoint. I think the idea that we can, you know, recycle textiles and, and you can send things back to companies and they can reuse them for, for different things. And now we're seeing technology come out where we can, you know, take waste out the ocean, right. And create textiles mm-hmm. from that create shoes. So I guess talk about like your, are you optimistic that more companies will do stuff like this? Or are you looking at ways to make even more design shoes out of the recycled materials going forward? You know, when you first arrive in this industry, uh, you just hear a lot of people telling you, okay, recycling a shoe is impossible. There are too many different materials in it. Mm-hmm. We cannot make anything out of it. There are glue everywhere on the shoe, etc., etc., etc. So if you just listen to the people which are in the industry for 20, 30, 40 years, Maybe you just think, okay, things are like this, and we cannot change anything. And as you just say, as you, as you just say, there is a huge opportunity. There is a huge opportunity to to change things. The thing is that we still have to find viable business model for recycling the products. People say it's not possible because it has a cost. Right. But I think that as a brand in 2020, you have to bear this cost. The society cannot bear the cost of the end of the products that you put on the market. The consumer can maybe be part of bearing the cost because he's the one buying and using the shoe. Mm-hmm. But I think that the brand has to bear the cost. So for me, the, the thing is just changing the way of thinking and saying, okay, how can I uh, incorporate this cost in my business model and in my way of doing? Uh, you know, when I give back 10, 10 euros on a pair, when a client send me this pair back, I just, I just, I don't give him uh, a bill of ten euros. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I give him uh, uh, a voucher to to buy something back on my website. So I'm having it buying buying new products from from my brand. Yeah. So I'm trying to, yeah, to to. This is one of the solution you have to 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 have this cost uh, bearable for you. So. Uh, there are many, many things uh, that can be done. Uh, the shoe industry and the fashion industry in general was not really willing to move from itself, I think. But for me, I was not comfortable with the idea, okay, we cannot recycle a shoe, but we can go uh, in the space. You know, we can go on Mars. I think that's not right. possible. Yeah. Just- I, I, think it's a, yeah, I think the same way all the time about we can do these unbelievable things that don't necessarily 
you know, have an effect for, for us like day to day, but then the stuff that does have an immense effect for our society day to day, somehow we, we can't do it, right? It's impossible. We can't recycle fashion or shoes. We just have to go to Mars. <laughs> like that yeah. has, to, yeah, has to be like- And no, we can but... go to Mars, but we cannot recycle fabric. Yeah. I, I, cannot, I cannot fully understand. And <laughs> I'm not telling that the recycling part today is uh, like perfect. Uh, sure, yeah, it's probably going a long way to go. Uh, process is to use the waste uh, like for combustion. Mm -hmm. uh, burn the waste and you make energy out of it and uh, it, uh, it avoids using a coat or other material. Uh, so it's not a 100% perfect uh, recycling process, but it's always better than just having the, the shoe buried somewhere uh, in the middle uh, of a forest. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Walk for School program because I'm, I'm always fascinated how companies can reinvest locally you know, I, I love the idea of, of, you know, obviously you're creating jobs and that's a huge thing, right? But there's always, there's always other things, right? There's always other stuff that, that maybe companies can do or take a look at that could have a, a, a bigger effect as well, right? So talk a little bit about the, the Walk for School program and, and what that does. Yeah, as I told you at the beginning, our idea when we started Pan-Africa, when, when we started Pan-Africa was to have a positive impact. That mean working with uh, with suppliers uh, that work with right conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we wanted to go a little bit further, also. So the idea was: okay, we are selling a product, we are making money because we are a commercial company. How can we give back uh, part of the money we make to to causes that that we want to sustain? Yeah. And so we just came with a very simple idea at the beginning. Which was to which was to finance one school kit uh, for each pair sold, and so we first did this in uh, in Benin, uh, in Western Africa, and uh, I didn't I didn't tell you, but we started with a crowdfunding campaign and we sold uh, two two thousand pairs uh, on our first crowdfunding campaign, that was in two thousand fifteen, and so we financed two thousand school kits uh, that we distributed in, in, in Benin. So we went wow. there uh, working with a local NGO. And yeah, that was the, the first idea. And then, okay, you, you, you start developing your business, etc. And you and we were really thinking, okay, how can we give back, but with something much more consistent with our activity, with our core business. So we moved from uh, supporting education to supporting professional training. Mm. So, mm -hmm. So now we, mo we mostly work with an NGO in Burkina Faso. Uh, it's an NGO called Africatis. It's an NGO that trains women to waving and dyeing the cotton mm. uh, to make fabrics. We finance the, this NGO. We finance training for this, uh, for this NGO. And then we buy the fabrics they make to use it on our shoes. And okay. so for, for each pair sold, we, we give back money to this NGO. And we've been financing two main uh, trainings. Uh, one uh, was to use ecological dyes. Is that correct in English? Yeah, yeah, yep. Uh, instead, instead of like classical chemical dyes. Yep. Uh, and the other one was to learn how to wave on larger waving machines, let's say. Hmm. Because they usually wave in waving machines that are 40 centimeters uh, wide. I talk in centimeters, sorry, I'm, I'm French. <laughs> sure, sure, no. And, um, but they can, they can also wave on, on one meter 20 uh, machines. I, I call it machines, but it's handmade. No? Right. And so we, we finance the training for, for this, uh, and this enables the, the women which are waving to be much more productive uh, and to have a fabric that they can sell for much more uh, different uses mm -hmm. than when it's just 40 centimeters um, wide. So yes, now for, for each person, we give them an amount of money to this NGO in, in Burkina Faso, and it helps them developing. And uh, it's like a win-win thing, you know? I don't really like to see this as charity or I don't know how to call it. No, it's, a, it's investing. I think you're, you're investing in the local community, but you're also investing in, it's another, to me, it's a very creative 
way to invest also in your business too because it's a win-win uh, situation yeah I mean, it's beautiful it's, it's they beautiful. now they use uh, ecological dyes it's much less toxic for the people themselves it's much less toxic for the environment and it's much better for us and much uh, more aligned to our values and same thing about the 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 kind of fabric they know how to they know to make they, they can make now it's uh it's yeah it's win-win situation I want to talk, I want to stick a little bit in the, the local Africa community and, and kind of, it kind of see like, because I, one, like for, for as a consumer and somebody who loves, you know, sneakers, I love the shoes, right? Like, I think they're beautifully done. I Me think too. the story is amazing. But how about like, do you see sales coming from Africa too, right? Like, do people locally like the shoes, right? That's always, to me, that's always an important thing is that like, you know, does the local community like have the same response as somebody purchasing it from the UK or somebody purchasing it from, you know, Miami, do they see the same interest in it? Like, do they appreciate uh, the shoe as well and the design? And sure, the sure, sure. Yeah. We have, it's not a huge part of our clients today. Uh, and it's mostly because of a logistic reason. Mm -hmm. uh, we are based in France. Our warehouse is based in France. Our stock is in France. And uh, unfortunately, the logistics costs to Africa are quite high. And, you know, we sell our products between like uh, $75 to $150. Yep. If you have to pay like $20 or $30 extra for, for ship, yeah. Shipping, yeah, it's a, yeah, really expensive. Yeah. It's quite expensive. And the problem is that the logistics is not that much developed in, in Africa. And so the costs are high. And uh, I guess it refrains a few people to, to, to buy from, from our brand. But we had uh, a few shops selling our products uh, in uh, Kigali, in Rwanda, in Senegal, in Ivory Coast. Wow. Uh, so we were selling wholesale in, this, in, this, in these countries. And uh, yeah, the success was, was, was huge. And we have a lot of people uh, following us uh, on the social networks, on Instagram, on Facebook, and loving our products, which are based uh, all around the world, including in Africa. But unfortunately, to be honest, the logistic parts is a bit uh, a, a hard point today, and it's like limiting a bit the sales we could we could do there. Sure, sure. Is there eventually could you maybe foresee like working with the manufacturer to all also be a shipping for the continent? right where they can they make the shoe right but then also use the same facility um to ship locally uh within the within the country or within you know within the continent again i don't know if it country to country it's still very hard to ship right it's maybe even harder in wow <laughs> okay wow okay. Uh, yeah it sounds it sounds maybe a bit weird but if you want to ship from Morocco to Ghana, for example, mm -hmm, I'm not mm -hmm. sure it will, cost, it will cost you much less than shipping from, from France to Ghana because the, the, the logistic routes are not that developed between gotcha. two countries. So we are still working on, on this subject, trying to find solutions to, to develop our business there. Because as, yeah, as you said, we buy most of the materials there. We make the production there. We invest in local communities in right. Africa, and uh, we also think it's a huge market for yeah. us, for our products, and we are willing to be much more present on this market. The, the, the hard point is the logistics. Yeah, sure, sure. So usually I like to end on uh, a little bit about the future, right, and future maybe goals and, and success that, that you want to see, and when you and your partner sort of like, you know, sit down and chat about the company and look look onward you know maybe three to five years what are some of the goals that that you guys want to want to see succeed and come to fruition first of all you know we're like five years old so it's we're still young still yeah young. yeah sure we've not we've we've had a big let's say a big development a big success uh but we still have a lot of uh, way to do <laughs> knowing that you know we have a lot of commitments in terms of production in terms of ethics etc so um, we still need to develop to to be financially more more solid let's say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's not like if we were like 15 years old or 20 years old like fully settled on the, in the industry and we can just say okay now we can go on new projects and imagine new new things we're still a young company, a small team, uh, and a young brand, and we need to put this brand much stronger on the market. 
first in our market, which is mostly France at the moment, but also internationally. Mm -hmm. so we're quite willing to expand uh, in Europe, in the US, etc. Then one of the most challenge, for, one of the most challenge, uh, according to me, is to go much further, much further into our uh, commitments regarding sustainability, uh, mm -hmm. regarding mm -hmm. environment. There is much to do. Uh, yeah, there is much to do to change materials for better, better materials. That's already what we do on on our collections. For example, we switch it all the lining from standard cotton to Organic, organic cotton. <laughs> We've switched all the soles from uh, standard rubber to recycled rubber, yeah. but we can still do a lot more. Uh, sure. That's uh, what will we be face focusing on the, the, the next month. I mean, that's, that's for me the, the, the main challenge. And then we have also like business challenge, like develop, develop the offer because our products are quite original, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we are not targeting at the moment 100% of the market, but we want 100% of the people to have a pair of Pan Africa. Sure. So we have to develop new designs to work on our collections, to work on new styles, uh, knowing that fashion is like changing every day. But we don't want to be changing every day because we don't want to to fall in this rush that uh, you know the big fast fashion brands have, changing collections every two weeks to make you buy more. Right. It's not our spirit, but uh, on the moment we are quite on a niche and we think that if we if we want to have our project and our message broader wider we have to to talk to more people uh, and this means uh, having maybe a larger offer amazing i love everything that you've accomplished so far and, and i i love the story of like you know not being in the industry and, and coming in just you know, cold and, and just making it work and, and figuring stuff yeah, out. Yeah, you have to know you have to know that we we've made a lot of mistakes. Hey, everybody does though, right? I mean, it's it's part on of the, it's part of the, the process. Itself, on the product itself, on uh, yeah, at the beginning the sizing was not good. <laughs> uh, uh, the quality could be improved. We've been losing a lot of money uh, because uh, we don't know how to do. So you lose a lot of time and a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's really part of the journey. It's part of the process. No, it's part of the process. It, it makes it makes it that much sweeter when you uh, you know when you finally Perfect. yeah when you get to a point where you know customers are, are appreciating what what you've done and what you've built. So you know, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, it's uh, it's fascinating to to learn about journeys and and learn about you know companies being built, especially within you know the fashion industry because I just again I think it's just one of the industries that has such a potential to to impact the world in a positive way mm -hmm. and it's it's sort of lacked for so long and, and to get new new blood into it right to to do things differently um to to make things better i think is is so important and especially within within the sneaker arena because i think it, it is that one area where i think globally uh people love sneakers and love shoes right mm -hmm. and that's so it's such a massive industry where if we can disrupt it from a a much more ethical standpoint and sustainable standpoint, uh, create local jobs. I think it, it's the impact is, is, is beyond, I think what we all can imagine. And, uh, and so, you know, continued success and, and great luck uh, the rest of this year. Yeah, and